large desktop, this is what you'll see when you boot up from the live CD. Um, Jason, do you want to give these up? What's up? That's it. Thank you. Why are you thanking me? I'm giving you work to do. Straight fan. Okay, so, if you've ever used a GNOME desktop on Ubuntu or Fedora or anything like that, that will look very similar to you. It's basically just like using um, vanilla Ubuntu or whatever. Um, you get the same sort of stuff as before, you can rearrange the panels as you like, you've got all your normal applications, Firefox, etc. You can run all this stuff right from the live CD. Um, so if you want to just play around with open class, what you can do is you can boot from the live CD, or you can even just boot in VirtualBox from whatever other system you like into um, OpenSolaris using VirtualBox or whatever virtualization program you want to use. Now the installer is very, very easy to use. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Being too impatient now. So the OpenSolaris installer has that many steps. If you ever installed Windows, it's always a pain in the arse because you have to sort of sit and go through all the steps and wait for it to pop up with a little box asking you for your input methods and all that. So it's a bit of a babysitting thing. Um, similar to the Linux systems like um, Linux and so on. Put it from the live CD, tell it what you want, let it get on with it and come back later. Um, also, the, the most um, important bit is setting up your disk. So OpenSolaris will quite happily um, partition itself. So if you're doing a, a dual boot situation, maybe you've got Linux on one partition, you've got Windows on another partition, you can just quite happily create another partition, give it to OpenSolaris, it'll do it. For this, and this is just a virtual disk that I've got in my VirtualBox instance, so I'm just going to tell it to use a whole disk. If you can do that, that's the best way of doing it because that lets the NFS do more magic stuff and you'll get higher performance. It'll handle all that stuff for you. You don't have to worry about partitioning within Solaris. So if you've, used, uh, if you've installed Linux before, you'll remember having to set up a swap partition, things like that. Don't need to do that because it handles the whole for you. Visual settings, usual good. Select button. Hello. Space limit. Um, well, ZFS is 128 bit, so you're allowed 128 bits on your system drive um, of address space. So effectively unlimited. Um, I have a um, server that I run at home, um, which has a root drive of 250 um, gigs. And then I've got five one terabyte hard disks all in one storage pool, and that's seen by Solaris as effectively one disk. It's quite happy with that. What's the recommendation? Recommendation is uh, what is the recommended minimum size? No, yeah, like maximum for how many Really depends on what you're trying to do. So if you want high um, read performance, you're probably looking at doing a mirror or a maze or whatever like that. Um, generally. It'll run quite happily on whatever you fancy giving it. Um, I can talk more about that later once it gets into the interface. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, and in case if I need multi OS, if I need to boot from two OS, mm -hmm. I need multi OS system online. Yep. Open Slash will quite happily do that. Oh, is it, is it there in the first step if I have to mention the partition or? Open Solaris will def by default install Grub, the bootloader, to its own partition and it'll set that partition as active on that hard disk. Um, so it'll then let you to do, do your multi-booting from there. Um, sometimes it's more helpful to have Grub installed in the NDR and you can do that once you've installed it, it's nice and easy to do. It'll also play quite happily with um, an existing bootloader, say for example you've already installed Ubuntu and it's got a Grub instance already set up. All you need to do is set that Grub instance to chain load the Solaris partition and it'll quite happily come up. If you, th this, what I'm trying to do here is give you a very brief overview, so I don't want to go too far into technical details like that. I can walk you through stuff like that quite happily um, on the awesome discussion forums or if you want to just ping me an email, anything like that. Okay? So, Going back to the, the, the installer, Locale, annoyingly it only lets you use US English, um, but hey, it's just an interface language, so who cares. Um, put in your passwords, so unlike 
systems like Ubuntu, you can actually be root on Solaris, which is kind of handy. And so it asks you to provide a root password for the Windows users among us. That's an administrator password. Um, your name, I'm going to put in Lamsey because that's what I always put in. And when you create the user account here, that user account automatically has administrative, administrative privileges. Um, so that's nice and easy to use. Computer name, I'm just going to open Solaris or whatever. Um, there you go. Hit the install button and it'll just do it. It takes about half an hour or something like that. Depends on your system, depends on why you're doing, you're installing it in a VM or whatever. It takes quite a while on this because my laptop is basically a bit of crap. But hey. um, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, once it's finished, it says, please reboot the system and take out the TD. And hey, you've got Solaris. So that's how easy it is to install from the CD. So you've all, have you given the CD to everyone? Yeah. Cool. So you've all got a CD. Um, I do have more. So if there's people who are wanting and you know, folk who aren't here who might be interested, feel free to come and grab another one later on. Okay, so I'm going to get out of this again. Do you want to start the video? Have you started the video? Yeah. Okay. That's going to look good in the video when I check that the video's on. So I'm going to close this lobby VM instance down, which this is another demonstration of how handy um, VirtualBox is. You close the window and it says, do you want to save the machine state, power off by simulating a power button, whatever. If you just save the state, it's kind of like saving it in standby, and you can just start it up again, which is what I did earlier on. Okay, so on to the boring slides bit. <laughs>